Good morning. It is good to see each of you today. I have two books that I want to read today in this story time with Mr. Adam. The first book that I'm going to read is called God Controls the Storm. And even from that title, you might be able to guess the second book that I'm going to read, which is a Bible story. But this first book, I think you're going to really enjoy. It's about a little girl named Iris, and she lives in the country of Guatemala. And if you want to get a map and look at that later today, uh, that might you might find that to be interesting. All right? So this is a picture of Iris. Iris is a little girl who lives in Guatemala. She's five years old. She lives with her papa, her mama, and her two little brothers, Esteban and Paquito. Close to her house is a river. And on both sides of the river, there are two big pastures. Many people keep their animals all together in these big pastures. Iris's papa also has cows, calves, and a horse in the pastures. During the rainy season, rain falls almost every day. It is the rainy season now, and it is a very wet time. One day, the rain does not stop. It keeps raining and raining all day. When Iris goes to bed that night, it is still raining. The rain is called a temporal. When Iris wakes up the next morning, she still hears thousands of raindrops leaping and bouncing noisily on the tin roof. Iris quickly gets out of bed, being careful not to waken Esteban. Good morning, Iris, Mama greets her, offering her a cup of coffee. Good morning, Mama. Iris takes the cup of coffee, helps herself to a pan from the table, and finds herself a seat near the door so that she can watch the rain while she eats. When will it stop raining, Mama? Iris asks. And how will we wash the clothes if it keeps on raining? We can't go to the lake in the rain. The wash will have to wait until God sends us sunshine, Mama answers. Maybe I will wash some of Paquito's diapers here in the pila. Soon, Papa comes in, carrying a bucket of milk. He has finished milking the cows. Water drips from his clothes and makes a little puddle on the floor. Mama takes the bucket of milk and puts it off to the side, and she will make it into cheese later that day. What a heavy rain, Papa exclaims. The river has already risen quite a bit. Some of the pastures are underwater. Papa... If the pastures are under water, what will the cows do? Will they drown? Iris asks worriedly. Wor wor <laughs> worriedly. And what about the horse? Don't be afraid, my daughter. God is in control of the temporal and the river. He can make the rain stop. But if the river rises too much, we'll need to move the animals to other pastures. After breakfast, Papa must, must catch the bus to town to do some business. He wraps himself up in a big piece of plastic and puts on his boots and straw hat. Then he goes off, splashing through the puddles to meet the bus. All day the rain falls. Iris cannot go out to play. She must stay inside. She plays with her doll, Jasmine. She pretends she's going shopping in the market with her little cansada. That's her little basket. Mama washes some of Paquito's diapers and hangs them in the house on a string. Iris and Esteban play hide-and-seek behind the wash, but soon they are bored with everything. It is already late afternoon, and still Papa has not returned, and still it has not stopped raining. Mama, where is Papa? Iris asks for a third time. Why isn't he home yet? Do you think the water has risen so much that the roads are covered? Try not to worry, Iris, Mama replies. God is taking care of Papa. Listen, I think he's coming now. Splash, splash. Suddenly, Papa is standing in the doorway, dripping wet. Papa, shouts Iris. I'm so glad you're home. What took you so long? Mama brings a towel for Papa to dry himself and a rag to mop the puddle off the floor. Are the roads dangerous? She asks. Well, the bus got stuck on the way home, answers Papa. So I had to walk the whole way from Don Antonio's house. That's why I got home so late. Have you seen the river? 
Papa continues, it is still rising. Four men are coming to help me move the cows and horses to Don Manuel's pasture. And after quickly eating a plate of beans and a few tortillas, Papa goes to saddle the horse. Iris once again runs to the window toward the river. Mama, she screams, the water has come up to the chicken pen. What will the chickens do? Chickens fly up, up, up to the roof of their little house where they safely perch, Mama replies. Then Iris thinks of Grandpa and Grandma and remembers the time the river came up into their house. Mama, what if the river comes up till it reaches the house? She whispers. What will we do? What if it never stops raining? Iris, Mama answers. God is in control of the temporal, and he can make the river stop rising if it is his will. But sometimes he sends us hard things so that we learn to trust him more. Would you like to pray right now and ask him to take care of us? Iris nods her head, and the two of them kneel together. Mama prays, Dear Father, we thank thee that thou art in control of the temporal. We know that thou canst make the river go down again, and we pray that thou wouldst keep us from danger. We ask that thou would be with Papa also and keep him safe according to thy will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When they get up from their knees, Iris feels much better, and after a quick hug from Mama, she goes to play ball with Esteban. Nighttime has come. Still the rain is falling, falling, and still the river is rising little by little. Mama's face is very sober, and after she has tucked the children into bed, she begins to collect a few things in a consada. She gathers a bottle for Paquito, a clean set of clothes for everyone, and the tortillas that were left over from supper. After a long time, Papa comes in very wet and very tired. Praise God, he exclaims quietly. He has answered our prayers. The rain is stopping. The river is still rising some, but it looks like the temporal is ending. Papa and Mama do not go to bed all night. They sit up to see if the river will come to the house. They spend much time praying to God to keep them safe. Finally, it becomes light outside, and Papa goes out to see how close the river is to the house. It has begun to go down, and the danger has passed. How thankful Papa is to see that. The family gathers around the table for breakfast. Papa, Mama... Iris, Esteban, and little Paquito are all safe. God has taken such good care of us, says Papa. Let's sing, God will take care of you before we pray. You know, we sometimes sing that song here at Westside, don't we? God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you, God will take care of you. No matter what we have going on in our lives, we need always to trust God. This family trusted God, didn't they? And they show us a good example that when times are maybe difficult in our lives, that we can always trust God. Now, this Bible story that I want to read now is about Jesus calming what? A storm. Well, that's what we read about in the book, wasn't it? A storm. And God took care of it. Well, here's another story that the Bible teaches us where Jesus took care of it. God took care of it. And this reminds us how powerful God is and how much he can do for us and how much we need to trust him. So Jesus calms the storm. Jesus was tired. His hand covered a yawn. The day had been busy from sunrise to sundown. There had been teaching and healing and stories to tell. Many folks brought their sick, and he made them well. How could Jesus rest with the crowd still there? Why not sail across the lake? The disciples knew where. The boat left shore, the crowd waved goodbye. Jesus soon slept beneath the starry sky. At first it was peaceful, the waves splished and splashed, but then a storm came up. It came up so fast. 
Jesus slept through it, pillow under his head, peaceful, relaxed, as though in his bed. The wind shrieked and moaned, the boat gathered speed. Why was Jesus sleeping? His friends were in need. And the winds roared more fiercely, waves whooshed o'er the bow. We need to wake Jesus and do it right now. Don't you know we could perish? They questioned the Lord. Get up or we'll drown. We'll be swept overboard. Be quiet. Be still. Jesus spoke to the waves. Quickly they calmed. They had to obey. Jesus asked his disciples, Why were you scared? Have faith. They'd forgotten. Jesus always cared. The disciples then wondered, Who was this great man who brought them safe sailing, got them out of that jam? He was awesome, magnificent, full of power was he. How did he take charge of those raging seas? In time, they'd, come to, they'd know Jesus was God's precious son, that his life would be given to save everyone. Jesus calmed the storm, didn't he? He just told the waves to stop. He just told them to be calm. Peace, be still. That's all he had to say. And the storm went away, didn't it? Well, we need to remember, young people, that that's the same Jesus who we serve today. Even though he's in heaven, he still cares, he still knows, and he still loves us very much. And so whenever we have uh, something going on in our lives and we're feeling a bit overwhelmed and sad, we need to remember that all we need, all we need to do is pray to God and God will take care of it. He loves us so much and he is full of great power and he can take care of anything that we need. I want you to keep that in mind today as you go about your day and you enjoy God's creation and all the things that he gives us to enjoy around you. But know that when maybe you're sad or maybe you have something going on in your life, I want you to remember that God is always there. And we just need to pray to him and trust that he will see us through. All right? All right. I'm always here if you need me. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you soon, okay? Bye-bye.